How do you? Good morning or good afternoon or wherever you are. Welcome to the Yorkshire Bike Mechanics YouTube channel. My name's Dave Kay and I hope you're all well. Today uh, we've got in the workshop a rather poorly Lapierre 627i. It's a 2019 e-bike um, and it's not a bad bike to be honest. I've actually had one of these uh, and I quite enjoyed riding it. It's a Shimano Step System E8000. Um, really, uh, uh, really reliable. Uh, we've got the WO13 issues, which we get with all uh, Shimano E8000 steps bikes. Uh, they just like to be turned on uh, when they stood still. Um, quite a common problem. Um, so, but this bike's come in. A uh, customer took it out for a little bit of a ride on a on a challenge that he was due to do. Uh, got a quarter of the way around. Uh, and found that uh, it had actually died on him. Uh, no power whatsoever, no response. Uh, when he came to boot it back up, the display flashed on and then flashed off again uh, and wouldn't do anything. On a little bit of a closer inspection, he said that the he found that the charging port underneath, which is in a, bit, in a little bit of a silly place, uh, were loose and flapping about and it was full of mud. Okay, so there's probably your problem, uh, I would have said. Uh, it's obviously shorted out and uh, decided not to work. It ran through its own diagnostic system when you booted it up and it thought something's not right. I'm not going to allow uh, myself to be turned on. Um, and if bikes could talk, that's probably what they were thinking. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean this port out uh, I'm going to give it all a good clean, dry it all out, re-lube it all, make sure there's no shorts there now, uh, connect it ba back up and we'll run it through diagnostics uh, and we'll see if it's actually coming up with any faults. So let's crack on. So let's open up the Shimano E2 project. We've connected the bike uh, to the laptop. So we'll just click next and enter and what the system will do, we'll read the parameters from the bike uh, and it should display them once it's actually once it's actually done that. So it only usually takes a minute or two, if that, uh, to actually go ahead and do that. Okay. So we're all connected. Okay. We can see uh, that it's actually connected because we've got a, a battery status symbol there and a disconnect uh, icon there. Okay. We know that there's an update available for this particular system because the red lights lit there. So if you just double check that, okay, the update is for the motor, it's the E8000. There's no other updates, otherwise it would actually stay in these particular sections here. Okay, but so before we go ahead and update that motor, what I want to do is check for any, any errors. So if we go to maintenance, okay, and then if we just enable the error log, and what it'll do is it'll look at all the errors that's been logged uh, since it will last reset. And this takes a couple of minutes, so I'll come back to you in a second once it's loaded. Okay, so we're now loaded. All the error messages that you can see since the last reset are actually listed there. And as you can see, all the error messages, messages that we've got, uh, WO13, uh, we've covered this, bit, this off before um, on a, a surge that we did not too long ago. What it's doing is it's actually self-diagnosing itself on startup to make sure everything's right before it starts to uh, access your power. Uh, and if things aren't quite right uh, during that boot-up process, it'll throw up this error message, WO13. It's very common, not an issue, um, uh, and we can just clear all those off. Uh, we could have a look and do an error check as well while we're at it, but I think before we go ahead and do that, then I think we should update the firmware to this particular motor. So let's just click update and we'll just update this firmware and then we'll just carry out an error check um, on the system just to make sure that it's actually working currently uh, and there's no issues, which I think it will be, to be honest. So I'll come back to you when that's done. So the firmware is now updated, as you can see, and we can just click OK and enter uh, that uh, and it shows us that that particular components being updated. So what we need to do now is we need to go through some error checks uh, and we'll just make sure that everything's running right on the bike 
So if we start here and we look at perform an error check, we can choose which component uh, we want to check. So we'll click them all and we'll click start, okay? So what it's doing, it's just basically diagnosing the first section, okay? Uh, and it's wanting us to turn the crank clockwise for four or more rounds. And we'll click start. Okay. So after turning that four times, no, no fault found. Do it again, like it's asking us to. Hold the errors, the uh, the sh the the mode shifting. That's fine. Press and hold the Y button. Okay, now I'm holding that down, and there's a fault on that, and I can feel that when I'm actually pressing that down, it feels very very sticky. So let's go back and we'll try it again. And we'll retry it. Okay, now it's worked now. So we know that there's an error, an error with that particular uh, mode switch on the left hand side. So we need to make a note of that. It could be that the clamp is too tight on the bar and it's just not uh, returning the, uh, the lever as it should do. So we'll have a quick look at that and see what's going on. Okay, so that's basically it. We've gone through all the systems that it wants to check. Uh, the only fault that we've actually found is the one with the switch. We've gone through as update, so we've updated that. Uh, so really, there's nothing else to do. We can actually customise all of these switches here through the diagnostics to uh, to perform different func functions. Okay, so we can change the settings, we can customise the assistance, and we can see what it's actually currently set at. So the so it's currently boost low, trail low, uh, and eco high. Okay, which is unusual really. Normally you'd have eco low, uh, trail boost, tra sorry, trail medium and boost high. So I'm going to reset that. Um, if it if he wants to change it back, then certainly he will do. But I'll I'll mention to him that the that that's actually been changed, and we'll just apply that. Okay, so we can customize um, any particular part of this bike. As you can see, we've we've changed the uh, the assistance. How's that's delivered uh, through each particular mode? Okay, uh, we can uh, display the the speed in percentages. Um, or we can turn the light off on on if it's if it's got one uh, we can change the function of the switches assist up assist down um, and we can we can have a look and change the uh, the brightness the beeps uh, the language the clock uh, there's quite a lot of configuration that we can actually do here um, on this particular bike and the the software the e etube software from shimano is relatively simple to use it's not particularly it's not full of full of information it's all kind of split up into sections which is fairly easy to read you're not bamboozled with loads of information uh, you can look at each section and what each section does uh, so yeah we're all done uh, all that needs to be done now is to uh, disconnect uh, from the uh, from the software uh, and I think what we'll do is let's have a look at this uh, switch, uh, this mode switch on the left hand side. So we've got a sticky switch. OK, we've run it through diagnostics. We've updated the firmware on the motor, uh, but we've actually um, diagnosed a faulty switch. And if we press this switch, it's actually sticking. I don't know whether you can see that. Let me see if I can. It's in focus. Here we are. So this this actually switch it's well it's been set up uh, as a mode switch uh, to go from high to low eco um, trail and boost. Okay, now we've got a sticky switch here. Now this actually could be it could be a faulty uh, mechanism inside, 
or it could be I have noticed if we look closer I have noticed that this particular switch is fairly close to the lever on the handlebar so it could be that this switch is slightly distorted on the bar and it's been tightened up distorted and it's basically uh, frozen or made it difficult for these actually levers to move and release uh, they do move but they're just not releasing right so so what we need to do basically is just loosen these nuts off and see if that's actually the issue now these switches are pretty robust to be honest and unless you clonk one falling off it's going to last you for ages so there's you know it, it could be that that's the reason so thanks for watching i hope you've enjoyed that it gives you a little bit of an insight into shimano's software diagnostics uh, but there's one thing i want to do um before we sign off two seconds listen to this screeching brakes now I can see looking at this that this is definitely contamination because the bottom of the caliper looks wet yeah contamination just remember that squeak because 99% of the time that screech and that squealing is contamination on your pads right I'll see you later toodle pip